We turn to each other and we ask ourselves, are we ready to check in? If we're not ready to check in, that could be a problem. It probably means that uh, we've gotten ourselves too far down the path. Where second, or if we if we still aren't ready to check in, I'm, I'm getting really nervous at that point because I may be I may be doing some sort of refactoring that's just too broad and too sweeping, and I may end up making so many changes that I'm going to be introducing merge conflicts all over the application. What it does is, in the end, it gets me down to a one-hour one development of cadence, so that I'm breaking down my work in a, in a reasonable size chunk. It's easy for me to take on, it's easy for me to have a machine, even if you're not fair programming, and use the timer for yourself and see if you can get to the point where you're checking in every hour. The next one is testing in a production clone or a production -like environment. A lot of teams wait to test their application in a production environment until the very end, which what that means is they find a lot of uh, they find a lot of deployments or functional issues at the very end of the software development cycle when it would have been much better off to find them ahead of time. On the last project I was working on, for example, we uh, we made the choice we wanted to use an in-memory database. Uh, during the development cycle to speed things up so the unit test would be fast so that people would easily be able to check out from subversion and have the database set up on their machine without having to install Oracle, for example. Um, that worked really well. The build was really fast. There were, no, uh, there were no problems for any of the developers. But then, after about four months of development, we decided, oh, we should probably start testing against Oracle since that's our, that's our deployment database. Well, as soon as we started testing against Oracle, we found all sorts of issues. Even though we were using pure JDBC calls, etc., we found all sorts of problems from just the way Oracle treated different field types, for example, that were different from the memory database that we were using. So the issue here is we had all, the, all these functional issues that um, were implemented three or four months ago. And we were just finding them now when we were supposed to be deploying in production, let's say, two weeks later. We ended up being able to get them all fixed in time, but the right thing to do would have been, I think in this case, would have been to continue to use the in-memory database set it all in time to keep things fast. But, but what I should have been doing is having cruise control build my application and test the application against uh, Oracle and against, um, I think that they're the application server with WebLogic, had it actually tested against against the real production uh, deployment stack so that I could find those issues immediately. Um, so in this case, the developer would have been checking in on that project every about every two hours to, um, to do it for us. So now I ended up with two tests in the production clone side. So I think what I think the English title of the slide, I don't know what the I don't know what the Chinese character said, but I think the English title of the slide is supposed to be something along the lines of you uh, use metrics to track your application. So the whole idea here is that now that you've got this automated continuous integration environment, you should be analyzing your code all the time. You should be looking at it for trends and patterns that the developers might be introducing that are likely to cause you problems down the road. So what I like to do is I like to use lots of different metrics type, lots of different metrics tools. Uh, for example, code coverage. So how many lines of, of test code do I have versus how many lines of production code? Uh, what's, the, what's the average cyclomatic complexity of the methods in my application? And it's not that any one of these metrics is particularly important in and of themselves. But what I do want to do is, from the beginning of the project on, I want to be tracking these so that I can so that I can look for a trend. So if my production lines of code are going way, way up, let's say I just introduced 10,000 lines of production code in the last iteration, but I only introduced 200 lines of test code, what that means is my development team and I should probably be having a conversation about why we're not writing unit tests or what, why we're not writing enough unit tests. So the way I like to think about metrics is that metrics are a promise to have a conversation. So in the iteration planning meeting, we sit down and we look at the graphs and we talk as a team about what they mean. What does it mean that our code coverage has gone down, uh, but our lines of test code has gone up? Um, so that's really what, it about, what it's about, is facilitating that conversation, having something to look at, having something to, uh, for the team to discuss about what's going on in the application. This one is don't break the build. So keeping the build working is important at all times. It's never okay to check in some broken code and then leave for the weekend. 
essentially what you're doing is any, any of your team members that want to come in and work over the weekend and develop the application even further, they can't do it now because you broke, you've broken the bill and they may not know how to fix it. Or they may look at the change that you've introduced and not really understand it the way that you do. So the key here is, going back to that step-by-step -step process that I, that I had at the beginning, the key is to always watch truth control to make sure that uh, after you've checked in that it's actually passed. So I was working on a project a few years ago, and uh, we were we were in Calgary, Alberta, which is a really nice really nice city up in Canada, and it's right by the mountains, so people like to go skiing all the time. So there was one Friday one Friday afternoon. There was a guy on the team who was working hard to get a story card implemented. He'd been trying really hard all week to get it checked in, and he thought he had everything working, and he checked in, and then he didn't wait for the for cruise control to pass, and he took off in his car, and he was going for a ski trip with his girlfriend for the weekend. Well, he got out to the mountains, and fortunately at his ski chalet, they had internet access, and he, and he brought up his email, and one of the things you can do with cruise control is have it spam uh, the developers whenever they check in code that breaks. So if the bill's broken, you're going to get an email every five minutes saying, hey, dummy, you broke the bill. So he had probably a hundred of these, hey, dummy, you broke the bill emails in his inbox, and he knew that the other people on the team were getting spammed as well, people like me. So uh, being the diligent developer that he was, he drove an hour and a half back to Calgary, 